Welcome to another episode of Jay Leno's Garage. Tonight we're going to talk about my favorite class of vehicles, original and unrestored. This is my 1981 Honda CBX. Bought it brand new in 1981. This vehicle has a lot of nostalgia for me because a Honda CBX was the first new vehicle I ever bought. I was, uh, what, 27, 28 years old. In 1978, Honda came out with the uh, CBX six cylinder, 100 horsepower, six carburetors, 24 valves, which just seemed unbelievable back in the day. And I, 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 I was so excited about this vehicle, I, I couldn't sleep. I still have the issue of Cycle World magazine with it on the cover. It was the world's fastest production motorcycle at the time, although Suzuki and Kawasaki quickly caught up to them and, and passed them fairly easily. But when it came out, it was groundbreaking. It was unbelievable. And it was not particularly successful because the bike was pretty complex. Uh, I think you had more engine than chassis. I proved that because when I bought my 79 CBX, I put about 3,000 miles on it. And I crashed it pretty hard and totaled the bike. So with the insurance money, I went down to the Honda dealer and there were no more uh, 79 or 80 models left. The 81 had come in. This bike retailed for, I think, $4,100. And I got it for $2,100. I got $2,100 in insurance money. I went down to the dealer. And he said, I can't move these. You want it for 21? I said, sure. And I've had it ever since. Uh, original paint, original everything. They made a sport tour out of it with the Pro Link suspension and the fairing here. And uh, uh, even had, which is kind of funny, Jimmy Carter had instituted that, you know, 55 mile hour speed limit was in. And they, for some reason, all speedometers could only go to 80 miles an hour. So you can pin this thing in third gear, almost second gear, just like that. I just never upgraded because I wanted to keep it all original. But as I said, it's original paint, original everything. It's got the saddlebags on it, even the stock exhaust. There was a great tendency to go to the six into, uh, into you know, six into six and all kinds of uh, Kirker and everybody had all kinds of custom exhaust systems for these. But I, I, like, I like leaving it kind of stock. Here's how you know you're getting old. When a bike you bought brand new is on the cover of Classic Bike. I remember going down the newsstand and seeing a classic bike, and I got a CBX. Why are they putting new bikes on the cover? And I went, oh no, it's not new. I'm just really old, and I've had this bike for 30 years. And it's really funny to me, because there was a point where these were worth nothing. Uh, Honda gave dozens and dozens of them to various motorcycle schools and auto shops around the country so the kids could learn how to work on engines and things like that because they just couldn't give them away. And now the CBX has become a, a classic and, uh, and the price is, uh, well, they're worth thousands and thousands of dollars now. They've gone way up again. Here's the original brochure I got for it. This brochure is for an 82, but by the time I got to the dealership, all the 81 brochures were gone. But I've got to admit, still the sexiest engine out there. Truly a groundbreaking motorcycle back in the day. And uh, as I said, it's the first vehicle I ever bought new. Uh, extremely complex to work on. You've got to drop the engine to adjust the valves. Uh, well, here, here's what we did. We had to replace some of the, uh, you know, the rubber around the carburetor intakes. The bike is 30 years old. It was deteriorating. We replaced those. Well, here, here take a look. Well, here's the CBX right here. This is kind of what they look like with no clothes on. Very complicated uh, engine, very sophisticated. God, look at these six carburetors. You know, back in 1978, 79, this was just unbelievable, a six-cylinder motorcycle. It, it still is pretty incredible. And uh, just a wonderful, wonderful engine. But what happens is uh, these carburetors with modern gasoline, a motorcycle like this will sit for sometimes eight or nine months without being driven in the carbs. These run very lean anyway because of emissions, and the carbs get blocked, they run even leaner, and then this rubber starts to fall apart. So you need to replace that stuff. So I, well, here, I just got this FedEx today, almost like a bit. Let's see what I got in my carburetor. Oh a, oh, a hat, I got a hat. Let's see what the hat says. I get it my buddy Jack at oldschoolcarbs.com, www oldschoolcarbs.com and we've got everything. I got all new hoses. 
This guy's great. I, I mean, I called him yesterday and I got it today. It came Saturday morning. That's what, what day this is. And we got everything we need to uh, put this CBX back and get it running good. So Jack, Jack Wagner at OldSchoolCarbs.com. Thank you very much. And if you've got one of these, and it's not just CBXs, anything. He's got everything. And uh, I got it the next day. What's better than that? So let's put this thing together and uh, we'll take it for a ride. Uh, I'm going to take the hat off and put a helmet on. I think it probably makes more sense. Uh, but uh, this protects your carbs, but not your head. So we'll, we'll, we'll do that in a second. But Jack, thank you very, very much. So, uh, you know, I, I love these kind of guys because they, they keep us old car and old motorcycle people alive with guys that specialize in one particular thing, oldcarbs.com. I mean, that tells you exactly everything you need to know. So Jack, thanks a lot. I appreciate it. But uh, let's take a look around the bike. You'll see what it looks like with the fairing and everything off. We'll put it together and we'll, uh, we'll take it for a ride. Well, as you can see, we're all back together again. And the cool thing is we haven't repainted it or anything. It's just, uh, just all original. Kind of shows you the great thing about living in California. You know, stuff lasts a long time. You're in a desert climate, so consequently things don't rust and they don't deteriorate. And if you take reasonably good care of things, you can keep a bike your whole life. Some very clever engineering in here to uh, keep the, the width of the engine as is, is tight as they could. They went with a, a kind of a jack shaft off the alternator. And the other problem with this was that the, uh, the engine spun so quickly it was overriding the alternator. So they clutched it and it, that's that ticking sound you hear. Uh, you know, the CBX was not the first six cylinder uh, mass produced motorcycle. That was the Benelli, that was the Benelli 750. But that to me just looked like a Honda 4 with two cylinders stuck on the end. It wasn't quite as sophisticated as this. A lot more engineering went into this. The other thing I like about this bike was it's probably Honda's first big mistake. And I say that affectionately because it, uh, much like the Hemi Barracuda and the Hemi Coronets, the legend of the motorcycle was much bigger than the actual sales or production. They didn't sell very many Hemi Cudas or Hemi Talent Challengers, but that was the engine that everybody liked. And the same thing with this. They didn't really sell many of these. Uh, the Suzuki 1100 had come along, the Kawasaki. And those were probably certainly faster, better handling bikes, but there's nothing like this six cylinder engine. You know, you either get it or you don't, you know? I, there are so many uh, CBX websites out there now. This bike has become uh, like a Japanese version of the of Vincent Black Shadow almost. It's, uh, it's, it's the motorcycle that really put Honda on the map. You know, when, Han, when uh, Mike Hellwood won uh, the Isle of Mon, I think it was, it was, uh, 300 cc versus 247 cc's and it was 297 that six cylinder 250 that's what this was based on and uh that was one of the most amazing motorcycles of all time with the greatest sound in fact when this bike first came out the sound of the muffler was so much like an f-15 fighter jet they thought oh it's a little creepy it might scare people so they kind of altered it to sound more like a traditional motorcycle but uh well, let's take it for a ride see what you think well, we're ready to take it for a spin. In fact, I'm wearing the same jacket I had in 81, which is pretty good. Uh, yeah. Turn the key. No kick starting. Got your air suspension. Let's go over the gauges real quick. This is your tachometer, speedometer, ammeter, high beam, low beam, uh, rear suspension. And, uh, and oil. Pretty simple. And your horn. Let's take it for a ride. Can't believe I've been riding this bike for 32 years. You know, 30 years later, I'm still amazed at how smooth this bike is. And air cooling is almost a novelty now, you know, so many bikes are water-cooled. This bike is completely stock, so it idles a little high because, uh, uh, they just ran lean to meet emissions when they came out of the factory.
this does make a great sport touring bike. There's never much of a Goldwing guy. I mean, they're nice motorcycles, but this thing I just love. This big six-cylinder engine. Actually, it's not that big. It's 1,047 cc's, but your valves look like golf tees. I must admit, in 32 years, I've had no problems with this bike at all. They do tend to eat uh, alternator brushes, but that's not too bad. Every 10,000 miles, something like that. Uh, maybe a little more than that. I always thought that in motorcycling, this is what came closest to driving a big front-engine Ferrari or one of those kind of cars, you know? Just this great big massive engine. Very sophisticated, 24 valves. Well, as you can see, I've got to adjust that idle a little bit. You know, it's funny, when this thing came out, I thought these brakes were unbelievable. Compared to modern brakes, they feel like drums. You need a lot of pressure to stop it. But that being said, it stops pretty good. This is the first vehicle I ever had that had a 9,500 RPM red line, which just seemed unbelievable, almost 10,000 RPM. Uh, let's take it up on the freeway, see how she goes. That clunking you hear occasionally is the chain hitting the chain guard. I've got to adjust that. And as I said, we've got to adjust this idle. It's idling a little bit high. Here's what I love most about this bike, this long pull. Like... In, top, in top gear around 70, you're pulling uh, about 5,000 RPM, which sounds like a lot until you realize the red line's almost 10. This is what it does best, boy, just high-speed freeway work. You could go New York to LA, no problem in this bike. This was the first motorcycle I ever had where the mirrors actually worked. You know, most bikes prior to this, especially bikes from the 60s, everything just vibrated so much, you, you couldn't see anything. Windshield works very nicely for me, just kind of blows the air off the top of your helmet. Well, there you go. You know, even after 30 years, this motorcycle still, uh, still impresses me.